What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> if I talk to him, I know exactly what he wants. He wants to play. If I talk to him, he meows at me and it's so sad. Hey guys, so today's video is going to be about bugs. So if you don't want to see bugs, then you should not watch this video because there will be bugs. Okay, so two things. One, when we travel and make our traveling videos here in Japan, I always like trying to look for wildlife to add clips of them to the video because um, one, it's fun to look for wildlife. Two, everyone loves animals. Well, most people love animals. And three, I think it adds to the atmosphere of the videos when you go to places, because you know every place has their own flora and fauna. And so I think it's neat to be able to, if you're seeing, if we're showing a, a city here in Japan, I think it's neat to also see some of the plants and animals they have uh, there as well. And thing number two is ever since the internet came around and it had like once it developed enough information to where you could actually start looking things up because that wasn't necessarily true when I first started using the internet and everything was just geo cities wait geo sites angel fire web pages you know the really <laughs> really uh, informal ones uh, once there was enough information to where you could actually start looking things up on the internet I would begin looking up bugs I found in my house because I was terrified well I am terrified of, maybe not terrified I'm scared of bugs they freak me out I don't like them I don't want to kill them but they scare me and so I found that if I look up and I can figure out exactly what species of insect or arachnid it is and then I can look up information about them then I'm less scared because you know I would find that most of the spiders that we had in our house back in America were not dangerous at all and once I looked them up and realized that they would probably leave me alone then I left them alone and I, I wouldn't I, you know, just let them live there. And so if you combine these two things, me liking to find and film animals and me liking to look up bugs, you get me filming a bunch of insects <laughs> while we travel around Japan and taking pictures. And um, somewhat recently, this past year, I found a website called iNaturalist. I don't remember where I found it. This is not sponsored or affiliated with them. They have no idea I even exist. But I found this website, and it's a website where you can upload pictures of any flora or fauna. It doesn't even have to be bugs. It can be animals. It can be plants. It can be mushrooms. And then you can try to figure out what species it is. And once you are able to label the species, then it tags that animal into a list of all of that species uh, that have been entered by just random people. And it creates a sort of data bank of knowledge. So you can see where these bugs exist in the world. You can see what time of the year pictures are taken and so what time of the year they're active. Um, you're able to, of course, deduce a lot of really interesting information from that sort of thing. So you can see if from year to year, the areas, the regions where you people have been finding pictures are different, then you can uh, determine that perhaps this uh, animal or uh, this plant is you know invading a new area or perhaps it's becoming rare maybe they're having issues with extinction so it's just a really neat thing to do it I mean I don't know how much effect this is actually going to have but it seems like one of those you know like one raindrop sort of things so maybe you're just contributing a very small portion of things but it's better than not doing anything at all like if, if you have a hobby I think it feels nice to be able to do something with the things that you make rather than just collecting them for yourself so like with videos instead of just making videos for ourselves we upload them to YouTube and it becomes a lot more satisfying to have some sort of like to view it as something productive and so I really really like this website anyway we're going to get into that, but before that happens, I need to take you guys to the past <laughs> to see past Rachel because I um, made a vlog about this kind of when we were in Niigata Prefecture with Chris and Ivy. Uh, we had one day at the end there where I wasn't going to make a vlog about the actual, um, I wasn't going to make a vlog about what we were actually going to see, which was outdoor art. Art. yeah so instead I ended up filming a lot of bugs and so 
we're gonna cut back to that vlog and then we're gonna come back to the present again. So, <laughs> see you there. Hey guys, sorry it's so bright, I can't open my eyes. Uh, here in Niigata, apparently they have something called like Echigo Tsumari Art Field where there's a bunch of art outside just in random spots around the city. Those sounds in the background, by the way, there's like a foot race and I guess, I don't know if it's when people start or finish, they're firing off whatever that is. So that's what, that's what that is. Here's some art stairs. I like stairs. Oh, it's a bug. Looks like fun times this way. What we got? We got a giant bird bath. That's art. Yizu no puru. It's a pool of water. Scarecrow project. Oh, hi, dragonfly! Dragonfly, buddy! Here's, here's more art. They got in the car and drove away because I went to look at art and now I don't know where anyone else is. So I guess I'm just gonna walk along this road. You can see her spinning her web. This is so cool. Good on you, a hard worker. This is really awesome. This little dude's upside down. I'm afraid to get closer with some of these because I don't want them to jump on me. This guy's on the other side of the leaf, but I can see his shadow. Who are you? Look at him. He's kind of big. Whoa, oh, okay, there he goes. They make really weird noises. They're really cute. I like those guys. I keep bothering them because they're right where I'm walking and then <laughs> I walk where they're sitting because I can't see them and then they click, click, click and then they fly away. <laughs> Ooh, spider, spider, spider. Creepy spider. <laughs> you can hear them. There we go taking a break because it's hot, but can you guys see all these dragonflies flying around out here? All those little spots. <laughs> There's a ton of them. They're so cute. I heard that dragonflies uh, eat mosquitoes. So places that have dragonflies like can help reduce the mosquito population, which is cool. So go dragonflies. Dragonflies are really cute. I've heard they're really curious. This is another art thing, by the way. It's art. Oh, there's, there's Chris all the way over there. The pink shirt. Ah, 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 it's a huge, no, it's a huge butterfly. Come here, come here, butterfly. I gotta get her, I gotta get her. Follow in the butterfly, follow in the butterfly. No, 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 no. Can't see, can't see. There she is. No. <laughs> No, where'd you go? Pretty butterfly, where'd you go? Oh, oh, I wasn't fast enough. Oh, there's a lot of other bugs. <sighs> They're not giant butterflies though. Jeez. I found mushrooms. Oh, it's great. So this is the only one that I wanted to go to myself because it's basically just awesome architecture. Look at this. Chris, what is this? Oh, it's a satellite. It's a wind satellite. So it's a satellite. Representations of lots of different satellites. Huh. Satellite? This? Yes. Yeah. What is that? She knows her, oh. her astrology. 
<laughs> what, what is this one? Maybe that's a planet. Is it a marshmallow satellite this time? It could be an asteroid. Or it could be a representation of cellular biology. You're the most autistic person here. Rich asked me to stand interestingly in front of this thing. Uh. Can you do that? Rachel, Chris will stand interestingly. <laughs> no, 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 you gotta this angle. This angle? Yeah. Like, like, make sure it's like a diagonal. Like a diagonal. And hold my head small. <laughs> oh, it's creepy. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can't see you at all though. Oh, it's too dark. It's fine. Oh, your head is too small. Oh, oh, oh. I just ate lunch and I didn't realize, but when I was walking through all those bushes to find bugs, I got stuck all over me. Look, I've never seen burrs like this before. Look how many are on the floor. <laughs> I took all of these off my pants. All right, so we're done in Niigata and we're on our way back to Tokyo. I got some really neat looking bugs. <laughs> we'll see what we'll see what happens with our bugs when we get home. Okay. So now that we're back here, um, I'm going to upload the pictures that I took to iNaturalist and you can see what it's like and what the process is like. It's really fun. I like it a lot. Uh, so let me get set up with that. Let's see. Let's go to my observations. These are all of the bugs that I have so far. Um, my favorite thing from this is... Okay, so you know on the Nintendo 64, there is a game called Pokemon Snap where you take pictures of Pokemon. It was like one of my favorite games ever. It was so much fun. Um, one really kind of cool thing that I didn't realize until I uploaded them to this website and I figured out what species they were was I basically have, I have two evolutions of the same species. I have the hawk moth as a caterpillar and I have the hawk moth as an actual moth. I didn't know they were the same species until I started doing this website. How cool is that? So that's what that's what this guy looks like when he grows up and he becomes a moth. That's really awesome. Now I just need the cocoon stage and then I'll have every evolution of the hawk moth. <laughs> uh, okay, so I got to, oh, research grade. Uh, I think that once it becomes ID'd, then it's considered research grade. So, for example, here, let's click on my little blue dragonfly here. He is, I didn't know what he was, and a bunch of people did, so they commented. He is an orthotron triangular SSP Bellaria. So, they got very, very specific with the type of dragonfly it is. People are really awesome, especially like here in Japan, there are some people who, um, they, they're so into bugs and they're really really not knowledgeable so they comment on a lot of my pictures that I uploaded to ID them. If I click on this guy as total you can see what time of year that they're usually identified. This is not very many because there aren't many people in Japan on this website but if you were doing this in America for example there are a lot more people so there are way more uh, um, you know, identifications. But it's really cool because you can see what time of year they're active and then you can see where they've been identified. So if I scroll out, you can see that this dragonfly is common in Japan, mo mostly just central Japan. Um, well, as far down as uh, Kyushu. So isn't that neat? It's cool because you know, these are just normal people who are contributing to like the human knowledge of all of these species. I'm sure it's not, I'm sure, you know, most of this stuff is already known by professionals. I'm sure there are professionals who have way more detailed information than this, but I think this could help too. You know, if enough people are documenting species, then you can find out if species are beginning to invade in certain areas or if they're uh, starting to go extinct or if they're getting less common, you know, or you know, if they start appearing earlier in the year, maybe that indicates that the climate in a certain area is starting to change or something. So I just think this is really neat. Okay, so I gotta upload. And the cool thing about these being pictures is I can find out exactly when I uploaded them too. So 
or exactly when I took these pictures so I can add the date to this website and then it helps contribute to all that data. Um, okay, I'm gonna up, there's one dude I wanna upload really badly because he's so freaking weird. But he's so cool. This guy, I love this guy. Here, look at him. Look at him. Isn't he so weird? It's this guy. He makes really loud noises, and there are so many of them in Niigata. I like him a lot. So, that's around where I found him. And I don't know what he is at all. I'm probably just gonna have to upload him the way he is and see if anyone else can identify him. But, let's look and see if I can figure out what he might be. Search for filter by place. Everyone else is much, much better than me at taking pictures of bugs, but I'll get better. I just started, so I'm learning. I'm still learning how to take good pictures. Look at all these pictures of bugs other people got. It's, e it's easier to identify things like dragonflies or spiders because you know generally what they are. Like, you can get it, you can narrow it down to dragonfly or um, that other one. I can't remember. There's dragonflies and then there's another type of... I can't remember the word right now. But something like this. I literally have no idea what type of bug this is. But he's so, he's so cute! Long green bug. I don't know. Oh, 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 he looks like this kind of. Doesn't he? It's gotta be the, some, something like this. Conehead grasshopper. Kind of looks like it. It's Japan. Mine's skinnier. These all look a little bit different. Cone heads are a variety of Katie did. I can't usually do this for too long because sometimes I start getting like goosebumps. <laughs> Let's go back here and search. Oh, here we go. And since I'm in Japan, right? I'm, fil I'm still filtered by Japan. Now, now I'm filtered by Japan. If someone else has taken a picture of the same thing, then... Oh, no, okay, yeah, there's more. When I'm not making videos, it's because I'm spending hours trying to look up bugs on the internet. <laughs> trying to move. It's this guy, it's this guy, right, right, right? Oriental long-headed locust? No. He's a little... Is he a little different? You gotta be careful though, because I mean, you know, just because they look pretty similar, it could still be a different species. This guy? This guy? No, he doesn't have this long leg, but he looks really similar. It's so fun when you find out what he is. No, this one looks different. He has these long legs. Maybe mine is missing his legs? Okay, so what else I can do is I can click on this guy. See all the pictures of him. Oh, he doesn't have the back legs. Maybe they fall off at some point. What else I can do is, now that I found this guy, I can go out one, what, what is this, to the genus, and then I can look at the different types. Instead of that specific species, I can see <clears throat> if he's a different one. So what I can do is I can label him as this species, and if the people on here who know much more than me agree, then they will confirm it. And if not, they'll suggest another name. I'm gonna upload my... these three dudes for now. Okay, we're back to the present permanently. We're not going into the past anymore. Since that day, I have uploaded a couple more pictures. Uh, a few people have commented to help me figure out species. And I figured out a couple more of my own. So we're going to see the final update for my newly entered insects on iNaturalist. Let's go! Okay, so here you can see the most recent activity. Uh, 
Again, because I'm in Japan, there aren't quite as many people to respond to things, but sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So a couple people have um, tried to help me identify things. So um, Susanna helped me figure out that this was a fly, which I suspected it was a fly, but this was a really freaking weird looking fly. Look, at it. it's got like, uh, it's got a yellow stomach with black squares on its stomach. I've never seen a fly like this before. And um, since she didn't seem to know exactly what it was, and I couldn't find any pictures of this here in Japan, I started Googling, um, actually when we were on our way to Tokyo, I spent the whole ride Googling different species, all of the species of flies in Japan, and trying to find pictures of flies that looked similar to this. And it took a really, really long time, but I think I figured it out. Yeah, that's what I wrote in my description. It took me a while, but I think I found it. It's a... Uh, Hosotsuya Hirata Abu. So, this is the only one, this is the only picture of this fly that people have submitted in Japan, but it's quite common in other countries. If we zoom out, you can see all of the places that people have uh, put this fly. So, lots of uh, Europe and North America. Because I need someone to verify my identification, they don't have mine listed in Japan yet. I don't know if anyone will verify it because like I said, there aren't quite as many people doing this website here in Japan since it's in English. But I'm almost positive it's this fly. These are the two resources that I use to determine that this fly is for sure my fly. Um, so here's some pictures of the... the... Uh, Melastoma, Melastoma melanum, and you can see on the top, it, it doesn't seem to have like the black squares, but I realized it's the female who has the black squares on the bottom, and I don't have an image, I couldn't find an image of a female uh, from underneath normally, but this one, you can see she's got her eggs inside her and it's the same and I, I figure you know it looks more white once that her abdomen is is that abdomen once it's extended with the eggs um, but you could tell that this is the correct one because the eye shape is quite weird it's not a perfect circle so my the picture of the eye was like a, an interesting shape she's got a furry back like that Mine's got a, a furry, a little bit of a furry back. Uh, the two little stubby yellow antenna sort of things. Uh, this one's got that. The yellow legs, the color of the abdomen, the uh, shiny metallic head thing here. And uh, I determined, well, I didn't determine. I found people talking about this insect and they said that the female has space between the eyes on the head and the male doesn't. And also, here's a female with her eggs and she's got the black squares on the bottom. So, I think that's what this fly is. And this was listed on one of those Japanese websites of um, all the flies in Japan. Of course, they didn't have any images of the female one like this, but it took me a long time, but I found it. And I was really, really excited. Really, I was proud of myself. <laughs> I figured out exactly what it was. Um, so, uh, going back to my thing, Scott King helped figure out exactly what type of um, dragonfly this was. I have a little red dragonfly here, and he uh, labeled it as this one. I don't think I've verified this yet because there are a lot of red dragonflies, and I wanted to look at them carefully to make sure I, I, I agree. Even though, you know, I'm not a professional at all, but I feel like using my mind and my common sense and looking at types of things that are likely to be different on insects, like the patterns on the this part of the, the dragonfly, those are quite different for a lot of them, and just having different patterns can mean it's a different species, which I know because of my yellow dragonfly. Um, so because of that, uh, I wanted to spend more time looking it up to make sure that I agree, and I haven't done that yet, but yeah, I think that's basically it. Today. I just wanted to show you this website because I think it's really cool and I don't know maybe some of you guys have an interest like maybe you like taking pictures of bugs like I do and 
or pictures of animals and instead of just having them on your computer not knowing what to do with them you can submit them to one of these websites this isn't the only one I think there are other similar websites you can just submit them and help add to the public database of knowledge about these creatures which is really cool I like that so anyway thank you guys for watching and that's it for this video bye <laughs>